rather than later. I'm here again at Royal Wharton Bassett changing rooms and I'm sure soon they're going to be asking why is he always in the changing room. But today I would like to introduce another player. So this guy came in just before pre-season. He's coming back from an injury, so he's on his comeback year. He is now a valued member of the team. Ladies and gentlemen, can I introduce Tom Law. How are you? I'm, I'm very well, thank you. And yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you, Tom. Very well. So again, thank you very much for coming here and catching the ball and spending some time with me. Not a problem. <laughs> Have you seen the first two episodes? I did, yeah. I caught the first two episodes with Gavin and Tom. Yeah. So well, what... I, I know what I've kind of signed up for. <laughs> Brilliant, mate. And again, it's a pleasure to have you here, Tom. The reason we wanted you here, Tom, and we thought it would be good is because obviously with Gavin and Tom, Fields End, they've come through the development programme, whereas you're somebody a little bit different, Tom, because you've come from, you know, teams from the outside and mm -hmm. now come into the Wotton Bassett uh, set up. So could you give us a little bit of background for those who may not know you, Tom? Yeah, so I, I came to starting playing rugby a little bit later on in life. I started playing rugby when I was 16. I played football up until that age. Um, and because I was quite, quite a late comer to the sport, I didn't really know where I was going and what, what to do and that sort of thing. Obviously, I'd grown up with it because my dad had played rugby and whatever. He, he didn't like football at, at all. So <laughs> football was banned in the house, but I, I played it. But I'd always watch rugby. So I always had that interest. Um, so I, I joined a couple of clubs and I moved around to start with, um, playing Colts sort of level of rugby, uh, lo local to Bassett, um, but it, it never actually played here. Um, and then I, I started college and the, the coach at college kind of took me under his wing a little bit um, and he took me to some, some other clubs who were you know, a, a little bit higher so I, I played under him at college for a year and then he took me to a, a team called Old Batesians, uh, in Cheltenham and they were playing this the, the level that Bassett are now. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I was there for a year and then I moved to Sirencester for a year and played there for a season. And then that, that coach ended up going up to a, a National One club uh, and he, he dragged me along up there wow. as well. Um, so I spent a few seasons up at, up at National One, uh, really enjoyed it. And then I, I took a break for, from rugby because I got a little bit disillusioned at the time. So I, I just decided to go to another team in Gloucester where a couple of my friends played uh, and played for a team in Gloucester for a little while. And then I got <laughs> a few serious injuries. Um, I, I hurt my knee. Uh, and had ligaments reconstructed in my knee. Wow. Uh, and then on, on the comeback from that, I'd, I'd gone back to the National One Club because I, I didn't, at, at the time, I didn't want to turn up at a random club and say, oh, can you help fix him and stuff. So I wanted to go somewhere that I kind of knew. And they, they happily took me back. Uh, they, they put me through my rehab and stuff with all of that. And then unfortunately, I, I rolled my ankle and uh -huh. ruptured the ligament in my ankle. So, you know, and that, that's where I am now, unfortunately. Um, still coming back from that injury, and that was that was two years ago. Two years. So it's it's been a long time. Wow. Yeah. So for a man who's been many a club playing at kind of top level rugby, but now injured, you're just still not playing at the minute, are you? Not currently, no. 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 And how long do you think? Well, I'm currently uh, waiting for an injection uh, as a as a as a as a painkiller and anti-inflammatory, and hopefully that that will sort me out, and hopefully that's in the next couple of weeks. So fingers crossed, it's not too far away now. Good, good, um, good. So, so joining Royal Wharton Bassett, it was for convenience and kind of fitted more in with with, with your life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I've, I've always obviously I'm from Swindon, so I've, I've always been local. Um, my dad played here donkeys years ago <laughs> uh, when it was over at Stone Over Lane. So I've always kind of known about Bassett and what they've done and, mm. and that sort of thing. I did play at Swindon as my fir first year of rugby. Mm. So, you know, there's that local rivalry there. Um, but, you know, when, when they got moved here from Stone Over Lane and everything, I, I kept my eye on it and everything like that. And obviously with the new facilities opening with the gym and everything like that, it's such a a massive attraction now as, as, a, as a rugby club and the facilities they've got here. Good. Um, you know, when I came and I, I phoned Alan and had said, look, can I come and have a chat and see what it's like down there? And I was I was taken away with it, really. Fantastic. What blew you away with it the most then, Tom? Um, well, obviously the, uh, 
the, the setup and the, the structure and the facilities the club have got. You know, mm -hmm. it, it's very rare that you, you have a, a, a first team pitch that's laid out so nicely and stuff like that as well. Uh, and obviously the, the, the main clubhouse is in, in good condition and it's nice and fresh and everything as well. But mainly how like Alan came across as well. There, there was he, he was very open. He was very honest. There, there was no oh we'll do this, we'll do that. He, he was straight to the point. Mm. Very 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 clear to how things work at the club. Um, and I like that. You know, I've, I've been at clubs where that, that's not been the case. So I, I liked the, the fact that it was very very open and very straightforward and how things are here and how it's run. Good. So I guess the culture here. You know, we ban this word around culture. So tell me about your impressions or how you feel you fitted into the group and how that culture suits you as a person and as a player, Tom. So obviously coming in as an injured player, it's, it's always tough to, to, to come to a new club as an injured player because you, you feel a bit like you're taking the mick. You, you know, you're coming in, you're using the physio, you're not really involved with the boys and, mm. and that sort of thing. But one, one thing I have found is the boys have been very, very welcoming. Um, they, they've got me involved in, in the meetings and stuff that they have when, when they do the big gym sessions and stuff like that as a group they'll, they'll get me involved with that and, and, and get me involved in anything and everything that I can so it's not like I am stuck on the outside the whole time they're, they're getting me involved they're asking for my opinions they're asking for advice and you know it's, it's, it's good and then on a Saturday you know they, they've asked me to be water boy and stuff when I can and you know it gets me involved in, in the feeling as much as possible as that I am involved good uh, so so as a culture as, as a rugby club I think you know also with with my partner and stuff coming down as well they, they've welcomed her into the club really nicely as well so it's it's a nice family culture in the club as well good um, so it, it, yeah, it fits in really well with with how I am and where I am in my life at the moment really good and and we were conversating before we, we went on on camera you said you're not able to play at the minute are you currently not no um, I'm not still suffering with the injury and the complications um, I'm currently waiting for, for an injection to try and help get me through that uh, and hopefully that, that injection will work and then I'll be able to be able to be back out running around on the paddock. Fingers, Fingers crossed, crossed, Tom. Fingers yeah. crossed. <laughs> okay, so with that in mind, do you have any personal goals for this season? Just to get back playing, really. Mm. Um, it, it's, it's been a long time since I've played. I, I injured my ankle back in 2019 and obviously with, with COVID and everything as well, that obviously pushed everything back operation and stuff wise and, and getting diagnosed so it's, it's been a long time in the waiting for me to come back and play so that, that's the main aim this year is even if it's one or two games just just to get back out and playing and enjoy my rugby again yeah so that, that is my main goal really <laughs> like a tumble your yeah, face so just want to get out there yeah. and again even talking before the camera went on and I could just see it in your face and how you yeah. are you're just itching I'm, to I'm get excited. out there yeah, yeah. Well, best of luck to you in regards to that. So, so, you know, what you've seen of the team so far, and obviously it's been a level up for the, uh, for the club as a whole. Yep. So what's your thoughts on the season so far then, Tom? Um, the, the, it's, it's a massive step up into this league, mm. uh, no matter who, who you are and where you've come from, the, 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 the level of rugby to, between kind of the league that they've come up to to this league into the next couple of leagues, there's always a massive jump up between them. Um, and I think... Initially, there, there was the, a, a thing of, you know, that the club had something to prove and that the boys had that, we're, we're the underdog feeling. Mm. Uh, and they, 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 they had nothing to lose. They, they had to go and show everybody what they had. And the first few games of the season, they went out and did that and they, they got a good couple of wins um, and stuff like that. And then th this year is, is a massive learning curve for the boys. Obviously, none, most of them or majority of them have never really played this sort of level of rugby. Mm. Um, so it's, it's a massive learning curve for them in, in that sense of, of how to deal with the pressure and all of that sort of thing. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough league to be in. Mm. Um, and they're, they're, they're still finding their feet, really. I, I think they shocked themselves to start with and then they, they've had a couple of losses on the bounce and it's, it's got their heads down a little bit and they mm -hmm. need to get that confidence back mm. and they need to start enjoying the rugby again. Mm. Um, but that will come. It, like I say, it's, it's, it's a learning year for them really. It's, it's all to, for, them, for them to gain experience. They're still a very young side. Yeah. So they, they've got a long way to go yet. Yeah. I like to think the result just gone Saturday, steady exactly. the ship and kind of now yeah. get that confidence back up. Yeah. Yeah, the last few weeks they've had a couple of close results, you know, uh, when, when they had a couple of close wins at the start of the season, then it started a couple of close losses. Mm. And then it, it was a few 
bigger defeats mm. and now they're on the way back out the other side and they, they had a close loss last week or the, the week before last sorry and then they drew last week so it, it feels like it is on the build back up again yeah do you feel as though your experience and especially come from a you know a, a league above do you feel your experience and what you know about the game and you know what you know personally about teams and exposure to tough conditions do you feel you can bring something other than what they do on the pitch, Tom? I would hope so, yeah. Mm. I, I think the, the, the main thing for me is, and another part of the reason that I, I wanted to join somewhere like, like Bassett, this, this local, is, is to give back. Mm. You know, I've, I've got experience of playing higher level and, and playing with some really good players, and I've taken that experience on, and now I want to give that back to people. Um, so, you know, like, like you say, I, I want to, for, for people to be able to come up and talk to me and say, oh, can I do this better or can I do that better or what would you have done here or just asking advice, really. Mm. Um, that's, that's kind of another reason why I wanted to be here, to be fair. Good. All, all, all the right reasons, Tom. Uh, yeah, well, I'd, I'd like to think so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what you've seen of the team so far, Tom, and obviously your inclusion into the squad now, how far do you think this team can go? There's, there's, like I say, there's still a very young side um, and there's a lot of potential there, um, but it's, it's how quickly they can learn and mm. how quickly they can pick up from the mistakes and, and learn from those mistakes or adapt to the, to the different conditions and the difference in the size and the fitness levels of the teams. Uh, speaking to a couple of other players in previous seasons, they, they've been able to be the fittest team in the league, mm. which is why they've run other sides off the park and, and that sort of thing, whereas they've now hit the level where everybody's the same sort of fitness. So that has kind of been pulled back out of their game. So it's, it's now they're having to switch on a little bit more rugby knowledge-wise and a bit more rugby management-wise. Um, and I think... You know, like I say, with them being so young, a couple of them haven't been able to deal with or haven't had to have a, a lot of pressure on themselves before. Um, so, it's, like I say, it's, it's a big learning curve for the younger lads to, to get that experience. Good. And you're definitely coming in then, Tom, with like an old experienced head who you feel can support the guys on and off the field. I would hope so, yeah. That, that is, is my aim. And that, that is... is like I say, part of the reason why I joined the club was to give to give back. So that, that's what I want to do. Good, fantastic. Well, thank you for that, Tom. But before we finish, yeah, you've got one more thing to give back. Okay. Okay. So it's time for a little game. You like games, Tom? Yes. Like having a laugh. Yeah. You like a game, Tom? Yeah. yeah. Well, I was thinking very hard to what could I do with Tom, and I thought because your surname's Law, you must know a lot about law. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so I've written down yep. some rules and laws from other countries, and you've got to say whether it's true or false. Okay. Okay. Fine. And a man with a surname of Law, you must know a lot I about. I must know a lot about it. You yeah. must do. I must do. You yeah. must do. Okay. Tom, do you know men must wear speedos on a French beach? I'm going to say that's false. Tom, that's true as well. Is it? That's true. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... I know what a pack next time we go to France, no problem. Keep the Bermuda shorts at home, Tom. Yeah. Okay, just a couple more, they'll put you out your misery. And Tom, do you know it's illegal to wear a suit of armour in British Parliament? Yeah, that's true. That is true, yeah. Tom. Very good. See, he does know his law. He knows his law, law by name, law by nature. And finally, Tom, do you know it's illegal to ride a cow whilst drunk in Scotland? Yeah, I'm going to say that's true. That is true. Yeah. Scots get to all kinds of they stuff, do. don't they? Uh, yeah, we've been fast, to be honest. <laughs> Tom, it's been a pleasure, mate, and look much. forward to seeing more of you around the club. Oh, mate, Fantastic. Definitely. Nice Thank one. Cheers, much. Tom. Thank you. Thank you.